Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. If you grew up in the 70s, you got to experience a classical musical sitcom called The Partridge Family. It starred Shirley Jones and featured David Cassidy in the lead roles. Jones plays a widowed mother and Cassidy plays the oldest of her five children, a family who embarks on a musical career. The series ran from September 25, 1970 to August 24, 1974 on ABC as part of their Friday night lineup. It was created for television by Bernard Slade and the series executive producer Bob Claver. It was truly inspired by a family pop musical group called the Calsills. In the early development of the series, the Calsill children were considered by the producers for these roles, but because they were not trained actors and because they were too old for the roles as they were scripted, they ended up abandoning that idea and going with trained actors. Shirley Jones had already been signed on as the mother Shirley Partridge and the star of the show. The producers were pretty insistent on this. They said that she had to be in the series and that was non-negotiable. In the pilot for the show that was filmed in December of 69, this unaired pilot differs from the pilot that was broadcast in 1970. In the unaired pilot, Shirley's name is Connie, and she has a boyfriend, played by Jones's real-life husband at the time, Jack Cassidy, and the father of David Cassidy. The family has a totally different address, and they live in Ohio. The series proved so popular that fame ended up taking its toll on several, if not most, of the starring cast, particularly David Cassidy. In the midst of his rise to fame, he soon felt stiffed by the show, and he felt trapped by the mass hysteria surrounding his every move. In May of 1972, he appeared nude on the cover of Rolling Stone in a cropped photo. He used this article in the magazine to get away from his squeaky clean image. The show is known for all the guest appearances that happened throughout its run. You'll see country singer Johnny Cash, where he made an uncredited cameo appearance in the pilot episode. Ray Bolger played Shirley's father in three episodes. Future Charlie's Angel stars Jacqueline Smith, Farrah Fawcett, and Cheryl Ladd all made guest appearances on separate episodes. The house in which the Partridges reside was a combination of a studio set for the interiors and an exterior facade on the back lot of Warner Brothers Ranch Complex in Burbank. The exterior house was also used as Miss Kravitz's house on Bewitched. During the first season of this show and the last season of Bewitched, both shows used the same exterior of the house as the residents for their respective characters. Over the years, this facade has been remodeled and painted different colors and used in an assortment of films and TV shows. But it's still pretty recognizable by the front step and the shape of the roof. Prior to getting this role as Shirley Partridge, Shirley Jones was one of the original choices to play Carol Brady on The Brady Bunch. But Jones refused that role because the way she put it, she didn't want to be known for pulling a pot roast out of the oven every week. And at least with the role of Shirley Partridge, she would be portraying a working mother, which Carol was not. Now you wonder why David Casty felt so bad during the series? That was markedly because... So many companies, especially Sony, were making a fortune off of him and his image. And his contract, believe it or not, didn't require them to pay him any royalties 
in doing this or even ask his permission. Even girls who paid money to join the David Cassidy fan club had no idea that their allowances were lining the pockets of people he didn't know or authorize to use his name. He was only able to change the contract terms after his manager realized that when he signed the first contract, he was only 19 years old. The legal age back then was 21, thus making the initial contract null and void. This manager was finally able to renegotiate his contract and give him a good piece of the action, as well as a new weekly salary reflective of his star status. Initially, he was only earning a flat salary of $600 a week. Susan Day wasn't the producer's first choice to play Lori. Another person who was considered for that role was Olivia Newton-John. Ironically, years later, when the film Grease was being cast, Day was the producer's first choice to play Sandy before this eventually went to Newton John. During the first season, the theme song had a different arrangement, different lyrics, and even a different title, one that was called When We're Singing. But during the second season, the more familiar arrangement of the theme song with the more familiar title, Come On Get Happy, was used and remained the theme song throughout the run of the show. Danny Bonaducci revealed many years after the show ended that during the run of the series, many people actually thought that the kids played their own instruments and thought that they should perform live. However, the only member of the cast to tour and perform was David Cassidy, who at the time had a successful singing career in the U.S. and the U.K. Now, like I said earlier, this show made David Cassidy one of the biggest teen idols of the 1970s. And finding women that were interested in being with him was never a problem. Even his Partridge Family co-star, Susan Day, had a huge crush on him. Day and Cassidy had become pretty close during their years on the series. But Cassidy looked at her totally different. He thought of her as basically a sister and he was completely dumbfounded when he realized about how she felt about him. She eventually confessed her feelings to him, but he completely rejected her. He stated that Susan lacked the slutty aspect of a female that he always found attractive. He said she wasn't dirty enough or nasty enough. She was too good. Cassidy worried about hurting her feelings because of his rejection, So he went on and had a brief physical encounter with her that he states was pretty unsuccessful. They did go on to have a really good friendship, but that's as far as it went. Take a look back at this classic show from the 70s. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.